Hi, my name is Sam. Welcome to Nothing Definitive. Today I want to talk about the moment of choice. So every day I get home from work and I'm presented with this problem, this feeling of indecision, and laziness, and I think the amount of choices in front of me is often so many that I also feel overwhelmed, like there's so many things that I could be doing. I don't really know where to start. I have trouble choosing one. And so I contemplate it and I struggle and eventually, or usually, it overwhelms and I end up doing nothing. I end up uh, making food, taking the dog for a walk, watching something on YouTube. Maybe I'll work on something for a little bit, but usually it's it's too much of a struggle to really dive deep into project work. And of course, there's a million excuses. And it's these moments of choice, of indecision, that define a large statistical portion of my life. Because these decisions happen almost every day, for years. And... It just occurred to me recently that by recognizing these moments for what they are, laziness, indecision, being overwhelmed, not really understanding what direction I should move in, they affect the long-term outcomes of my life. If I were to change this one thing, then some large percentage of my life would suddenly become different, more productive. And... I guess what I've realized after thinking about it is that the days that this doesn't happen are the days that I've planned ahead really well. I've thought even just a few hours ahead, like before I leave work at 2 or 3 p.m. maybe, if I can spend even five minutes kind of just in the back of my mind thinking about what do I want to accomplish when I get home? How should I structure my evening? That can be a game changer for affecting those moments. Allowing it to just sort of flow randomly, I get home and just kind of see what happens. That's when I, that's when I seem to fail most frequently. It also brings up another concept I've thought about before, which is the default behavior. That there are numerous things that I know that I could do that are, even if they're not directly beneficial to the things that I'm working on towards my long-term goals, they're still useful, they're still good. Um, and they reinforce my, um, my will and discipline. So things like that, for me, my default action or default behavior has always been meditation. Instead of wondering and, and hemming and hawing about what I should do I just immediately go to my default behavior. Sit down, meditate. Meditation is great because you can clear your mind, but you can also just sit with your eyes closed and really think about things more clearly. And so a lot of times out of meditation, not only do I feel better and feel more calm, but I also have more of a direction now. But it could be other things. It could be, um, you know, you, you don't know what to do next, so read a book or maybe uh, clean something in your, in your home or your apartment um, I also like to like clean and listen to audiobooks and learn something new. Um, whatever it is for you, maybe it's exercise. Um, setting a default behavior so that the moment you you feel that like that that point of indecision where you're like I could go left and succeed and be productive and do the right thing, or I can do what I normally do and go right and um, watch a movie play video games, eat junk food, sit around, and do nothing. You need to also think about it um, from a st statistical point of view. Like you're changing this value, this value that has a huge impact on your life. You think about every evening, there's this like decision node that pops up. It's every day, and it, and it corresponds to potentially hours worth of your time every single day. If you were to put that to good use, just 
think of like all the different things you could potentially accomplish, even if they're not big things, but just, you know, learning something or keeping your apartment clean or bettering relationships with other people or just reading more books throughout the year. I mean, all of those things are good, even if they're not, you know, big dreams or, or starting a company or something like that. It doesn't have to be that. It could just be you being a better person. And I think that's maybe even the most valuable thing. The other thing that um, this sort of leads into as well is um, the development of routine. So I've always had this sort of intuition about routines being valuable, but I'm, I've never like maybe thought about it, about why routines are valuable. I mean, I think it's it's on some level pretty obvious that having a routine allows you to be more consistent and more disciplined and stuff like that. But it also helps, it assists you in avoiding those moments, avoiding these moments where you can make a bad decision. By having a routine, it's like you get to bypass that. So on top of developing a, dis a new discipline, which probably just makes you stronger as a person, it empowers your, your will, um, it also just from, again, like a statistical point of view, eliminates these decision nodes along the way. And so it, overall, you have to, you know, I always look at it at, at, a, at a higher level, at a bigger picture. You're eliminating something that's of high frequency, even if it's not successful every time, if you get rid of 60%, I mean, that's a, still a significant amount of hours every week, every month, every year that you're putting to good use. Hopefully that makes sense. Um, thanks as always for listening and I'll catch you next time.